Welcome to Electron Online and here in our next application problem on right angle triangles we're going to do something that is kind of akin to what they used to use for nav navigation the earth way before we had good maps and uh, GPS and all that good stuff in order to find out exactly where we are around the earth they used what we call the sextant it's a tool that would uh, enable us to figure out where we were on the earth in order in in relationship to where the stars were where the sun was and so forth in the sky so what we're going to do is something kind of like it so let's say that we fly a satellite to a another planet and want to know what the size of the planet is and what we're going to do is we're going to measure from the satellite we're going to direct our telescope to a faraway star measure the location of that and then as the satellite travels around the unknown planet after we've traveled at a, a certain distance, let's say uh, we travel the distance of 5,000 miles, then we go ahead and measure the position of the star again relative to a point directly overhead. And we notice that now that star has moved through an angle of 40 degrees. From that, we should be able to figure out how large that planet is. Well, let's see here. First of all, if the star is really far away, the angle between this line and that line should be almost zero. It's never, never exactly zero, but it's so small that we can simply ignore it. If it's a faraway star, these two lines will be basically almost parallel to one another, which means that this angle here, theta, equal to 40 degrees, would be equal to this angle right here, theta, also equal to 40 degrees, which means that, of course, we've traveled around the planet a distance uh, of 5,000 miles and from that we should be able to figure out the circumference of the entire planet. Notice that if we go all the way around the planet we'll go through an angle of 360 degrees. We've gone an angle of, we have traveled through a, an angular distance so to speak of 40 degrees so that way we can find a good ratio here. We can say alright, the relationship between 40 degrees relative to 360 degrees, which is the fraction of a complete circle of travel, should be equal to the distance that we traveled, 5,000 miles, divided by the total circumference of that planet. All right, if we then solve for the circumference, we can say that if we then cross multiply, put the C over there, put the 40 down there, put the 360 down there, we can then say that C is equal to 5,000 miles times 360 360 degrees and then divided by 40 degrees and that should give us the circumference of that unknown planet all right so we go 5,000 times 360 divided by 40 and it shows then that the unknown planet has a circumference of 45,000 miles all right definitely not the earth it's a lot bigger than the earth now this exact technique was used by Aristotinus back in the days of the Greeks by actually measuring the size of the earth. What he did was he measured the position of the shadow at one position on the earth, then he traveled a certain distance, measured how far the distance was, measured the shadow direction at a different location, found that to be an angle of about seven degrees. He then used the very same relationship there to find actually the circumference of the earth. So here we, ha we use these techniques now readily and of course now with GPS we don't have to use this anymore we can just go ahead and punch it on the little computer tell us where we are we know exactly what the distance is but that technique is very handy again it uses the premise that if you look at something far enough away that this angle is almost zero so that this angle relative to the vertical is equal to the angle here relative to the vertical and therefore we can use that technique that's how we do that 